Can I give a 20 second on that? Or is that not supposed to be? Sure. The roads, the road bond in the public, in the capital. Sure. Tell Every us year about we've been putting aside 900,000. Just so you know, this this year is 950. The other thing is you put 50,000 away in SIP every year for sidewalks, but that always gets cut. We have 14 <laughs> miles of sidewalk. So I suggested why don't we put 950 in there and then call it roads and sidewalks. So if there's one year where we need more sidewalks, then we can spend on that account. So it has gives us more flexibility. But there's, we have too many locations. I'm not talking new sidewalks. I'm talking fixing sidewalks because we're going to start having a liability issue if we don't start doing sidewalks. We've done a good job of roads, but we have to get on sidewalks. So... Just so you know, that's why the 950 is going up. It's not because it's creeping. It's taking the 50 from sidewalks instead of it being a SIP, uh, being a CNRE, it's going into bonding. And it's appropriate for bonding because sidewalks are going to be there for 30 years. So, and you'll see that, again, when, when the capital comes up, we typically have 900,000. The, uh, the goal this year will be... 950. Uh, um, 950, uh, and, and, and we're going to do Saunders Point. Saunders Point is, is going to take 70% of the money. Yes. Which is not ideal because I don't, I mean, it's good for the people of Saunders Point. It's not ideal to spend 70% of your money in one neighborhood, but that those roads are trashed. Oh. They've been being committed to, they've been being told for years that we're going to fix the roads, yes. we're going to fix them, I'm going to start after the later. taxpayers have been very patient down there as we tried to figure out whether we could put sewers in or not, and we've delayed and delayed and delayed, and, and, uh, and they're getting... They're, side, they're getting the streets. Redone. It's going to be it's going to be done right. We're going to yeah. grind the roads up yeah. and repave them. They're not going to get. You can't overlay those. They're destroyed. No, they're, de they're destroyed. Right. Any other questions uh, right now? And we'll have more questions on capital when we get to see them. Thank you, Joe. Right, um, thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I, I know uh, you're you're all anxious because you don't want to look outside. <laughs> you don't want to look. And I know. Okay. I know uh, Lisa it travels very far, so I'm glad the library is next on our list. We'll try to plow through this. <coughs> is that plow word again? Uh, Lisa. Yeah, fortunately. What's that? Significant, right? Yeah. Right. Well, they said between now and now. Do and you guys eight. have a cot over at the library? <laughs> yeah. I have my husband on uh, social media, and he's telling me there's whiteout conditions where we live. To not drive yeah, home. so just stay. So, I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Find a, a quiet stack in the back. <laughs> it would be the first time I slept in a library. Um, in college, I'm talking. <laughs> not, not, you know, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> took a well, snooze. Go to the 800 a, section for history. <laughs> okay, 900 section. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's English. <laughs> so, um, what? So, um, let, let's. Yeah, and, and since we won't what be able to be this right now, if you just, um, so. for the first 30 seconds, explain your relationship to the town, that it's not really a town agency. Yeah, we, um, we are what's called an association library. Um, we are not a town department. Um, we, I report to a board of uh, trustees. Uh, I call them my 17 or 18 bosses. Um, they meet six times a year, every other month, first Monday of each month. Um, the funding for our library comes primarily from the town. It is turned over to the Board of Trustees, and at that point, um, myself and the, the Board of Trustees administer the library and report back to you. Um, but by no means is the money, it doesn't go into a, a big hole. Um, six times a year I make a report to the Board of Trustees on where that money is, and um, 12, 12 months a year at least three members of that board get a full accounting of every penny and where it's at. Okay, so we are an independent agency, but we're heavily dependent on the town. I Indeed. depend department Thank you. meetings. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what percent does this? Does uh, our somewhere between 91 and 92 percent yeah, of so our funding comes from the town. So over 90 percent of yeah. the money that you. Very mm -hmm. good. Very good. Um, terrific. Do you want to just walk us through, um, you know, lightly um, where the money's going this year? What changes you've instituted or? Or changes um, in the budget or anything Actually, like the to budget do. you have in front of you is uh, mostly flat, especially after the cuts that were made after our initial meeting. Um, there's only three, three increases, and one of those is um, staff um, salary. Um, I haven't marked out. Um, and so, so everyone knows, um, um, you know, they come in with a very elaborate budget, as, as, as you yeah, have tonight as well. Yeah, budget's 11 pages. But we also start in with uh, just a certain um, 
a, a certain number that nobody can go over. And mm -hmm. uh, you were right. at two point five percent. Not that you couldn't use more. Right. Um, the only I'd other love major. To give you more. Right. <laughs> right. I came in at um, four point one, I think, but most of that was because I don't expect as much revenue this year in, in terms of a carry forward because we we um, lost a lot of money in November through a cut. Right. Um, so basically, the budget is flat. I just adjusted for the fact that we're not going to have as much revenues um, next year going in. Yeah. Right. Um, the only major cost item that I submitted, actually there were two. Um, one was the Board of Trustees did ask me to um, increase the materials budget by $10,000 because it's been cut so drastically over the past three or four years. Um, originally I wasn't going to do that, but I agreed with them that we should acknowledge that we are getting a lot less money for materials. Um, I put that in. That's um, of the 18,000 that's been cut since January. Um, that 10 of it's there. Um, most of the rest is what are the most of the rest of the increases are from our Lion membership. Um, Lion is a consortium of 27, 28 libraries now um, that band together to um, save money on services, and we share books back and forth. Um, the membership fees for that are increasing because. We have this year developed a delivery system. If you'll remember last year, I spoke that the state delivery system was imploding. It has pretty much gone away. We are getting sporadic deliveries here and there once a week. Um, but in the meantime, Lion has stepped in, and we're getting two to three, two to three deliveries a week um, within the Lion's libraries. And that meets 80 to 90 percent of our needs. So we've actually landed on our feet. Um, Lion paid for it the first year. They're asking for $4,000 this year. They're also asking for a $2,000 increase to um, tighten up some of the security and whatnot. Our security doesn't go through the town. Our IT goes through um, our consortium, and they're, they're looking to do that. So I, I did want to come in and ask for that 6000 back if it's possible because we need to keep that uh, membership in that consortium. Really, the Lion Libraries represent what's regionalization. Uh, we, we hear so much these days about regionalization and... Um, the libraries did this in the 1980s. It made sense for us to do that. We didn't do it geographically, but we did it functionally. We banded together with other libraries, and we share IT, we share books, we share materials back and forth. This saves us a lot of money, especially with the materials budget going down. I'm able to not buy as many nonfiction books if I know I can get them from Old Lyme or Old Saybrook within a day or two. Um, so it, it kind of makes the, the cuts in the other part of the budget work a little more sensibly. Other questions? Or we let's, yeah, let's have questions. Would anyone like to? Uh, well, I'd just like to speak to the Lion account yes, and the request for some additional money. And that is because the high school withdrew from that consortium. And so now the school system depends on getting those materials through the library, through mm -hmm. the public library. Wow. Um, wow. And that's, uh, that was really a big loss because uh, obviously, you don't want to be paying twice or three times for something if we can get these materials through the consortium mm -hmm. um, as opposed to housing them in our own in our own library. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> indeed any other comments or questions? I, I did want to just quickly point out we finished a strategic plan recently um, and we're going to implement literally I got it less than 48 hours ago <laughs> the final plan so we'll have that out soon um, we're looking to implement some of the low cost um, suggestions in the next few months um, there are some larger costs that would have to do with physical renovations which obviously we're not going to do this year but in the next few years we might start talking about capital plan or, or whatnot um, we will need a new carpet I did put that in the capital of my budget um, we're holding off as long as we can. The, the carpet there is original to 1990, mm. so it's 27 years old. It's holding up well, but um, at some point we're going to have to replace it somewhere in the five-year range. Do you have your own capital plan within your budget? Um, we do, but... Um, when you say that? Most of the capital expenses at the library are paid for for our annual fund drive. We do our own fundraising. Um, that 9 or 10% that doesn't come from the town comes from private money and from our foundation. Um, we usually put most of that, well, not most of that, but a chunk of that every year aside for capital projects. We haven't been able to do that because we've been using it on books the past right. few years. We've right. had to move that to the materials side. Um, we do what we can. A piece of good news is that our, we received a large re, uh, bequest from Wilbur Beckwith last year, and our foundation is just short of a million dollars at this point. Wonderful. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll have a larger 
disbursement this uh, disbursement this year. I don't have the exact numbers yet. I should have them in the next two or three weeks. Um, but we should be able to offset some of that material, so we should be um, okay in that area at least. So we may be able to put some of that toward toward the capital costs in a few years. Your health insurance has nearly doubled since actual 2014. Uh, of course, you go way back. Uh, so maybe that's not... You know, we're, we're, we're comparing just two years back, so I didn't... Yeah, I didn't again, those... That um, that's probably just... That's the town's health insurance? That's, yeah, yeah. That, that comes from you give us the numbers and we right. give it back to you. It's kind of a, a back and forth. When you look at uh, Lisa's budget, which is very helpful that you give us that many years and we don't get to see that in our own budget <laughs> um, um, for a variety of reasons, but it really gives you, especially in this line, uh, what, it's, what health insurance has done in our town. Um, and believe me, we, we, we go out and, and make sure we're getting the best deal possible, but just the cost of medical insurance, or medical coverage has gone up so much, um, uh, actual bills. Um, you have your own telephone system, right? Yeah, we pay our own yeah, bill, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And your agreement with, uh, you don't have a union as far as the, the We do not go. have a union, no. They're, under, they're under affiliated, um, and they... We just you work things out. You have deal with them. I, they deal with me, and yeah. I deal with them, yeah. <laughs> so it, it works and, out and well. Your board, and your board and all that. Terrific. Yes, the board, yeah. The board pretty much sees everything. So. Any other questions? I also did want to point out that we're showing 800 more people coming through the door a month this year than we were last year. That's amazing. That's, that's why I hand you that. It, and people think yeah. books, and people just come by and read. Um, those are the not. That's that's a. That's a fact. It's just the, the counter um, let's, yeah, showing. Let's, let's talk about that. You have a counter on the door. We have so a counter on the this. door that counts how many people yeah. come in and out each yeah. day. And this year's um, numbers, um, again, it's incomplete because we don't have the rest of this year. Um, but we are looking at 795 more on average per month than we were last year. So. How many is that a day? Uh, I don't have my calculator. Yeah, yeah we, we do four, somewhere between. So 25 more people a day. On average, mm -hmm. uh, on a yep. seven-day week. Mm -hmm. A seven-day week, yeah. and we, yeah. we staff um, yeah. three three evenings a week as well for yeah. now. Right. That's amazing. So yeah. so yeah. it might seem like we have a big staff, but we have before we're seven finish, days a week. <laughs> before you finish, could you introduce your deputy? Yes. Uh, Tara Borden is here. Tara yes. um, is the assistant director of the library. Um, Tara had huge shoes to fill yes. this week, uh, this past month, when we lost Judy Layden. Oh. Um, unexpectedly, oh, yeah. um, Tara has taken over mm. in in a in an instant all of the finances of the library. Between the two of us, we've we've landed on our feet. It's not easy, but um, Tara's just an, an incredible job, and she will be at this point the library's financial point of contact. Right. We're going to fold that into her job, and we've taken part of her job and moved it to another reference staff. And we're also down to reference staff members, yeah. um, part time members, so we're short staffed at the moment. But we have some really great talent in the pipeline. We okay. made two offers yeah. yesterday. So we're hearing the story all night long, right? Is you know we're staffs are smaller and people are doing staffs everyone are else's smaller. work. Yeah, we're doing and, more but and, right. we had one quit, one go out on maternity right. leave and we lost Judy, so we're down three. Great. So other questions, comments? Thank you, Lisa. Much appreciated. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Safe travels, okay? Yep. Are you up? I'm up. Mrs. Wilson. Mr. Nickerson. How many years on the job? So this month is my anniversary month, and I, I started in 1994. I was in diapers then. 1994? I'm become a client. Is that like, um, <laughs> is that like 24 years? That's like 24 years. You figured that years, out all by yourself? Yeah. Account? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See how I did it? Want, want me to do the math the long way to so show you how I got <laughs> to the answer? Um, <laughs> so, I used to, used to do math. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could. At least, uh, sorry, uh, Kathy, you, um, you got great things going on over there, and it's always um, something new, and it's always hectic because there's so many people coming in looking for services, and it's not just delivering some lunches and playing bingo, is it? Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, all right, all right. So why don't you walk us through your budget and uh, tell us anything new that's going on at, uh, at uh, Senior Center. Well, something new is that my budget's coming in at minus 1%. So yeah, that's um, new. <laughs> 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 not that I've, I've ever come in with a large budget, but I'm coming in at a negative amount. And, and that, was, that happened for a couple of reasons. One, we did have a staff member that left for another job in November, 
And as you heard earlier, there was an internal candidate that applied for and was accepted at the senior center, but that position went from a 37 and a half hour position to a 30 hour position. So there's a reduction in the hours um, at that point. So that is one of the reasons why we were able to come down. Another reason is I just eliminated overtime, um, just felt like at this particular juncture, uh, we really couldn't had the expectation and that vehicles would be available, and, and the overtime is typically with driving, that we would have vehicles available for weekend or evening um, events. It's just not that we won't revisit this sometime in the future, but right now with the way the, um, the economy is going in our whatever. So, so we eliminated overtime. Uh, we have a reduction in a position. Um, the longevity is something that also was affected because we had a, an employee that was a longer term employee who, when she left, now we have a newer employee so she's not subject to longevity yet. Um, random drug testing came down. I was a backup driver when we had a Ford van. Well, now that we have three buses, I am no longer a backup driver. I am not driving the vehicles. I'm sorry to say, but I'm not doing it. Um, mostly because they're big and I don't drive them that often and I envision uh, the vehicle maintenance line to go up if I'm driving the vehicle, so we're not going to do that. So I'm coming out of that. I have four drivers, um, one full-time, three part-time, so we can cover it that way. Um, I did have two things. One, you'll notice my maintenance of equipment went up quite a bit. That is the RecTrack software registration. RecTrack, which is our software registration that we share with the Park and Rec Department in the Youth Center. Uh, last year or so, they went, we had an upgrade with the software. It allows people to do web track, which is to register online. But somehow or another, I didn't quite get the memo as how much my portion was. So Dave Putnam from the Park and Rec Department very generously covered what I didn't have. But now this is my full share. So it's supposed to be three. Um, division of three, so Park and Rec pays their third, Youth Center pays their third, Senior Center pays their third. Um, and I do have a very small new line item of just kitchen supplies because 1990 is when the building was uh, opened and we just need to replace some things. And this is just pots and pans, things like that, that uh, we just need to be a little bit more. Well, Kathy, at our last meeting for uh Mark and Roseanne, we gave some money out of the powerhouse account just right. to cover right. basic utensils right. which, uh, which and so Mark forth. Which Mark made fun of me about making my, my Yeah, <laughs> we did that in, in, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, kitchen. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 So that's, I mean, I can go through the statistics. I mean, we, uh, transportation still continues to increase. The population continues to increase. Our activities continue to increase. Um, we're, we're sort of at... Um, a tipping point because we really in terms of how much space we have and how many activities we can add we really are at the point where we can't add a whole lot more because we've just sort of working at capacity at the, at the community center with that being said there's still you know people are aging every day and people are coming through the senior center they're not caring that you know you only have these XYZ square footages they're looking for activities they're looking for blah blah so we're attempting to negotiate a way around, you know, if this program, maybe this program should go away, it's been running for a while because we want to get a new one going, or maybe we can squeeze somebody over here and move somebody over there, part of the life at the community center. If you were to, um, this, this room is underutilized during the day, I know, I know you, you have a center, but what, five years ago we were talking with the um, with yeah. uh, Brian Shook talking about having events throughout the town which well, keeps seniors on the move. And, and let me tell you about that because yeah. we were just talking about this today. Yeah. So <clears throat> the youth center during the day empty. has open space. Well, I don't know if it's empty, but there's open space there. So we have put programs over there and then, the, and then our participants want to come back. For, they, they like the community of, of the senior center. Of course they do. So it, it, it's, a, it's a hard nut to crack. And mm -hmm. you're right. We should be looking at different you know, locations and trying to run some of these things. I'm really excited for the Main Street Park. Is it, you know, what's that going to look like? And can we have summertime events down there, a Tai Chi class down, downtown? You know, it doesn't have to be at the community center. But um, it's, it's a hard – you almost have to introduce a brand-new program without any – 
attachment to the building, that this is where it's going to be, and people move forward from that. Because breaking those habits is just... So you're suggesting we should close down the library and expand well, now that I've, they're I've gone? Well, I've always said park and rec should yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the library. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We are limited. I'm one of those people that's going through the door that they're counting. Yeah. We're limited with our physical space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back and forth. We're not limited in our imagination and our desire to deliver. We are just limited in our space um, yeah. and, uh, and, our, uh, and our staff, the yeah. staffing uh, needs. You know, we'd love to put double or triple oh, your staff oh, and too. I'm glad that you sent that because so let's talk about that yeah, let's talk about that so uh, we do use a lot of volunteers for either running programs or program support so for example um, I'll have a dance on Friday night I have a bunch of volunteers that come in and help us run that or we have volunteer led programs like my chorus or um, uh, bingo or you know so there's not there's maybe some staff support but it's mostly run by volunteers when um, we had a change in the office, and now that we have office coverage from 8 to 2.30 instead of 8 to 4, uh, our busiest time in terms of phones and foot traffic and programming is in the morning. So for us to do, um, like doing a deposit, like having to have quiet time, make sure we're counting the money correctly, make sure we're, counting, we're, we're um, debiting it to the correct account, we typically want to do that in the afternoon when it's quieter. So now we're, we're using volunteers in the morning to answer phones. So we're really trying to uh, move volunteers Good. into the senior center to do some of those tasks that they need to get done. And there's yeah. you know, three of us doing 18 jobs. And I haven't even talked about transportation yet. So. And really, you're not running a senior center. You're running a transportation department <laughs> that maintains a, a, a little activity center on the side. Well, uh, I don't know. So let's talk <laughs> about let's talk about ve your vehicles and all the services you provide in, uh, for transportation. So I did a few little statistics, and our over the past five years, our num our average number of riders have increased from fiscal year 12-13 to 16-17 by 52 percent. I mean, that's and we have the same number of vehicles, and we don't have really any substantial larger number of hours for drivers we're just moving a lot of people and moving them a lot you know, when, when I say that I mean if we pick up 12 people it's not just one destination and then they go home we're picking up 12 people somebody's stopping at the post office somebody's coming to the senior center oh I need my prescription oh I need so there's a lot of um, pieces and moving parts to this and as I think I've said to this board and every other board that will listen to me, transportation is something we talk about every day, all day. It's not something that at 8 o'clock in the morning, I get in, I look at what's going on, my drivers come in at 8.30, we go, ta -ta 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 -ta, 10 minutes and they're gone. It is all day, every day we're talking about it. Whether people are calling in, I'm ready, come pick me up. People are calling in, I need a ride. People are calling, I'm stuck, whatever it is. We talk about transportation all day. How many full-time drivers do you have? One. Uh, Part-time drivers? Three. And when I say that, usually I'm running my one full-time driver and my one part-time driver. So I have my three part-times sort of work all yeah. crazy schedules. Yeah, they, they alternate dates. Yeah. You run two buses and one spare? Is that Correct. what we're doing? Yes. Okay. If, um, if seat goes away, the southeastern area transportation uh, goes away, the, and we, d we give them about 10000 uh, shy of $10,000 a year. Um, and you were to be able to pick up that money, uh, could you provide transport? Are you able, by the grants that give you the right, buses right, and all that, right. are you able to pick up a 25-year-old and bring her down to Stop and Shop? Um. I'm not sure. I'm just. I, that's, this is probably an offline conversation. But while while we're on, I'm just thinking so, out loud so about what. So seat bus is a very limited run here in town. It's essentially oh, up, I know up it and does. down one sixty. I know it does. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the clients that use seat bus are really not the clients that we're picking up. Right. So if the ten thousand dollars you generate to me or move to me, I, I think we would also we'd almost need a designated bus just for that. Yeah. You, yeah. Because it, you would want we're to mix busy the company. now that no, it's not even so much that. Okay. It's just how. How am I going to incorporate when I have twelve seats yeah. in a little vehicle? And it, it, I know. Okay. You know. Right. That's a, it's just it just it popped into my head about you digress. Yeah. I digressed a little bit, and I shouldn't with the snowstorm pounding down and Barbara wanting to get home. But um, but it, it's something we'll talk about. Okay. Because it, it, it's very real that it could go away in the next um, eighteen months. 
um, and um, there's only a few people that regularly use it in town. I think they stay within the town, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just trying to relieve your problem too. That if we're able to give you more money, you might be able to do more. Any questions for the Commission on Aging, or the Senior Center, or Kathy Wilson, in general? <laughs> I just, one one of the things Kathy uh, left out, I think, was. Uh, how you were running a tax service this year as well for people? You oh, had that's, people that's, come. So, that's always every year. I mean, but I, I mean, I, just, you know, I don't even think about it. But that's just something that here done. again. It's another service is yeah. provided, and they have to make appointments. But here's something great that, you know, a tax service, service is heating oil. It's it's, yeah, it's all the so yeah. there's a whole social service yeah. piece. Whole, on, and the right. so, that whole, so, as I meant, the social service right. piece. Right. That so, and I do try to limit it to the 60 plus population or the disabled population in terms of doing energy assistance application, rental rebate applications, Medicaid applications. Um, you don't always have the ability to push somebody off. I mean, depending upon what the circumstance is, you, know, right. you know, sometimes have to just help them. But, right. you know, I, I, the under 60 population and the services that are available for them are something that I'm not that familiar with, so it's not my comfort level. However, there are some things that I, I can, you know, muddle my way through. So, but yeah, we do all that. We, our tax, thankfully this year so far, no snow on Mondays or Fridays because that's when our tax appointments are. Okay. And we okay. have been solidly booked since probably the middle of February. Booked. So we're like, every time there's a snowstorm, we're like, it's just not on Monday, not on Friday, the other day is fine. So far it's been good. <laughs> no, so. not every other day is fine, but. Well, I, if, for me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but, yeah, but you're right, the tax service, and but that's all you. volunteer. That's wow. all volunteer. In fact, my husband is a part of it. Just have to put that out there. That's wonderful. I yes. know, right? He's a London citizen too. He's, isn't he's he? a, no, he's awesome. He's awesome, but he's, that's and he's nice. very good for me because he calms me. So when I'm like, <laughs> and I'm running around, and he'll I know I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> any other any other questions for uh, Kathy on her budget? It's a very thank you again. Very you're, you're you're maintaining. You're holding the line uh, to see a negative. I mean, I know it fills you with pride. It fills me with pride that we're getting what we're getting done over there uh, with great people and uh, a, a flat budget or actually a negative budget. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. That's it. You go home. All right. Uh, and thank my commission member, Mike Beckett, for coming today, too. Oh, yeah, let's, let's <laughs> talk about that. Thanks for coming out today. Sure walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you follow Kathy home, make sure she gets home okay? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. You didn't fly in. How are you enjoying retirement, Mike? No, I enjoy retirement. Have you? Yeah, no, no. Good. Good for you. Good for you. I know Waterford misses you. Barbara, are, are you of the Historic Properties Commission, and, and then right? Um, I'm going to be short and sweet and real simple. So 134 is the budget number. And All right. 139. 139. No. 139. Oh, 139. 134 is the next one. Okay. Right. Sorry. Barbara Johnson-Lowe has taken over the historic properties, as you know, uh, with the passing of Luane Lang and uh, Betty Murphy, too, as her sidekick. Um, 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 Barbara, you you didn't skip a beat. We appreciate you picking up the, um, the holding the reins and, 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 and really right from the first meeting, uh, uh, I stepped in to make sure it was going to be okay, and I, I felt like I wasn't needed very qu very quickly. I left. Thank you very much for picking this up, and I think um, um, you've made some great sense of what uh, the. Um, the intentions were of Luane and, and the commission, and it moves on and it progresses. So thank you. Why don't you just walk away? It's a very easy budget. Right. Um, just walk you right through. Actually, I don't have the budget page, but since it's only a couple of items, that's pretty straightforward. 